sleepapnea.org presents Portraits, Living with Sleep Apnea, a conversation with Janice Sternfeld. Janice, when did you know that something was wrong with your sleep? Well, I think the, the main symptom I had was terrible snoring. And um, I was in pretty deep denial, so I did a good job explaining it away by complaining about allergies and things like that. But uh, that was the primary thing that was very noticeable. There were other things that were more subtle that I didn't really connect at the time. Other things that were going on were interrupted sleep. Um, I had very severe gastroesophageal reflux that got much better when I went on CPAP. And I believe that that was caused in part by the sleep apnea. Did you experience a rock bottom moment before getting help? I had a very deep uh, rock bottom. I had um, an episode of very severe pneumonia and I think I nearly died during that. Um, That led me to get pulmonary function testing to find out that I had severe asthma, but Part of that process was I finally got convinced to have a sleep apnea test. And it had been about two years at that point that my husband slept on the couch because he couldn't sleep with all my snoring. And he tried um, earplugs first, and then he ended up on the couch wearing cute footy pajamas rather than complaining about my sleep apnea or my snoring. And uh, when I had all the respiratory problems, I finally got convinced that I needed to have a sleep apnea test along with it. How was your diagnosis handled, and what did it mean? When I first realized that the sleep apnea was severe and needed to be treated, there were two incidents. One was I went for a pulmonary function test, and the tech who did my test could see my scores on the sleep apnea test that hadn't been shared with me yet. And she would not let me leave without a CPAP. She insisted that it was very severe. And even then I didn't have that good of an idea, but uh, my HMO does everything in groups. So when you've had a sleep apnea test, you have to go back in a group and they, give you your results that you don't have to share with the group, but they talk about sleep apnea and teach you about it. And the um, sleep apnea test produces a graph, and that graph has a, a line, and blue marks mean apnea episodes. And they showed a few where there were blue, 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 and the rest was white. And when you looked at mine, it was all blue except for a few thin lines of white. And that was a very graphic description of how often I was stopping breathing during my sleep period and how severe it was. And I didn't show anybody else because nobody else had almost solid blue in that group. But that really helped me see how bad it was. With a CPAP, was the change like night and day? It was not a night and day experience for me to use a CPAP machine. Um, I had to uh, go home that day with a t- what they call a titration uh, machine, which they basically put me in a full face mask and a machine without a humidifier. And I was supposed to keep it about a week and try out CPAP. And I didn't want to do it, first of all, so that was really difficult. But it was very, very uncomfortable. Um, I thought at the time that you had to tighten the straps really tight to keep it from leaking. And I was miserable with that. Um, I was very claustrophobic, so I was having panic attacks. And I'd rip the mask off and then have to put it back on. And it was just very terrible that first couple nights, especially. How did you overcome the issues you had with the CPAP? Well, I got it set up and calibrated in part by using social media. I went on two websites that um, have patient uh, advocates for 
sleep apnea. One was the American Sleep Apnea Association and another one in addition to that. And people coached me through that, which was very, very helpful. They also were very insistent that I keep going with it because I was very ready to give up. So how long before things started to improve with the CPAP? It took a couple months. I think it was about three months in before I finally slept through the night. And I woke up feeling great. And it was the first time. But it was a solid three months getting there. And I learned to set little goals for myself about, you know, tonight I'll sleep this many hours uh, with it, hopefully before I wake up, or I will count to 10 before I rip it off my face and see if I can keep it on instead. So I made little goals like that. And my long-term goal was to sleep through a night. And it, it took about three months to accomplish that. What were the benefits that you noticed with the CPAP? The main benefit I saw when I started using CPAP is I woke up in a state of peace and comfort. And I think for decades of my life, I had woken up bathed in uh, stress hormones so, to the point where I would wake up in incredible tension and um, negative feelings and, and just very angry and upset every morning. And that first morning after I slept all night with CPAP, I woke up in absolute peace and comfort. And I hadn't experienced that since I was a toddler. That's how long I remember since I felt that way before. And it felt good. It felt like a great drug that, you know, if people knew they'd be selling CPAPs on street corners and things. So that became my new goal was to feel that way every morning instead of just once and it took a while. I had more bad nights, took a lot of practice. Um, but eventually, I got to the point where most mornings I wake up that way. And it's been um, self-actuating from that point because it feels so good. You want it to happen again. Janice, how long have you been using CPAP, and what has improved? I've been using CPAP for nine years. And the biggest improvement is I don't snore, so my husband can sleep in the same bed as I can. And that's a really big thing. We've been married 30 years already, and I don't know if we would have made it because of that, if nothing else. Um, the other thing is I have a lot more energy. I think my mind is a lot clearer. I don't have the reflex that I was having that I, I thought that might kill me because there were times I felt like I was drowning when I woke up coughing and couldn't clear the airway and it was going into my lungs and things. Um, once I was on CPAP, I was able to uh, follow a diet very well. I lost quite a bit of weight. You know, there's still more, but um, that made it possible to do those things, able to move and exercise better. I had chronic pain and CPAP was a big part of making that go away. I still don't really understand why but that was certainly helpful in that process. How does the Awake Together Summit benefit patients? The benefits I see from the conference are multiple. One is that um, we as patients get to see other people going through the same things. And that support is uh, very valuable to know other people are going through it, to hear how other people handle it to um, share with other people things that might help them. And then I think it's really important for the professionals to hear. Uh, somebody in the conference shared the fact that he felt like he caused his sleep apnea. And I imagine that the professionals don't ever think of how people feel about that. And I think that was really important for them to hear about how that person is going through that. Amazing. Do you have anything else you'd want to add? I just um, want to tell people it's, it can be a difficult journey, but it's worth sticking with because um, the benefits are worth the effort. To learn more, visit sleepapnea.org now.